All right, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Boys and Girls Club's Youth of the Year, by far our greatest night of the year. And I want to thank you all for being here, for bringing the energy and the enthusiasm that we can feel radiating off of your tables. And I hope you're having as much fun as I am this evening. Those incredible stories that you've heard are just, that's why we're here, and that's why we do this. So thank you for playing an active role in tonight's celebration. At the Boys and Girls Clubs, we believe in the American dream. We believe that all children, if they work hard and play by the rules, should grow up and have the chance for a fulfilling life, a chance for a good education, a chance for a fair paying job, a chance for decent housing, a chance to raise a family. We want to live in a society where children's future is determined more by their skills and hard work than by the circumstances into which they are born. In 2016, in America, unfortunately, there are large chunks of our population for whom the American dream is getting harder and harder to achieve. The gap between the haves and the have-nots is widening, and it's widening at an accelerating rate. We see incredible stratification and segregation based on socioeconomics in our community. And so the question is, what are we going to do as a country and as a society? Are we going to sit back and let this gap continue to grow unfettered to who knows where? Or are we going to take action and are we going to say all children, again, if they work hard and follow the rules, deserve an opportunity to grow up to live fulfilling lives. And it's also a local issue, not just a national issue. Right here, just within a couple miles radius of this clubhouse, there are 10,000 school-aged children attending schools in grades K to 12 who are going to have a very, very very hard time accessing the brilliance of Silicon Valley. They come from difficult circumstances. You heard five stories today, and the obstacles facing them are significant. 80% of the students in the neighborhoods we serve score below proficient on their standardized test scores. 40% are dropping out of high school. This is an example of things that are happening in pockets all across our country and the hurdles are phenomenal for these students. But it's not just it's an achievement gap issue. This is not a question just of a poor education system failing our students. If you look what's happening, if you understand the specifics of the situation, you have to understand that before the achievement gap comes the opportunity gap. And we're not going to address this issue unless we tackle the opportunity gap. So some examples of what we think about when we talk about the opportunity gap. 60% of the parents of the kids in these neighborhoods did not graduate from high school. Many of them, perhaps most, don't speak English very well. Kids are not able to get help with homework at home. Parents can't help them navigate which classes to take in high school. They certainly cannot help them decide what to do post-secondary education. Think how much time you spend with your kids, and imagine if you weren't able to do that. 43% of the youth in this neighborhood right here are homeless. That number skyrocketed in the last six months alone. The economic and pressures on our families are tremendous. It's very typical to have three or four families living per house. We hear quite often of, single, of families living each in a room, sharing a house. So imagine being a kid trying to take advantage of Silicon Valley growing up in that kind of a situation. At the same time, many of them aren't able to participate in extracurricular activities. The parents can't afford it. Most of them are very expensive. They simply can't afford that for the after school or summer hours. Additionally, the parents are working too hard. They don't have the luxury of taking off work at their convenience and driving and shuttling their kids around. And a last example 
is a tremendous need for, finan for just financing, short-term cash. We hear constantly of high school students who have to work almost full-time jobs after school when they should be studying or doing extracurricular activities. And we even know of high school students, unfortunately, who are dropping out of high school because they have to work. And it's just so hard when you're caught in that situation to invest in your future when all you're worried about is this month's rent or buying food for the family. And that's the situation too many of our young people find themselves in. So that's what the Boys and Girls Club's about. Those are the stories you heard this evening. The Boys and Girls Club is all about closing that opportunity gap and helping make the American dream a reality. And what you heard tonight is examples of the Boys and Girls Clubs providing a place where kids can come and be safe, where they can get that sense of belonging that all of us need. All humans need that sense of belonging. Or they can find caring adult role models who can show them the right way, who can talk about careers and colleges and help them think big and have aspirations. They can participate in enrichment programs that are so important for a well-rounded education. It could be art, it could be a sports team, it could be a technology program. Maybe they want to learn about healthy eating. Maybe they want a place they can have fun and just be a kid and relax and have that sense of of naive or just being enthusiastic and just being a kid for a while. And really, when it's all said and done, the single word that best sums up the Boys and Girls Clubs, and I think you heard it many times tonight, it's family. That's what we provide here for so many students, is a sense of family. Now, that sense of family, safety, and support is as necessary now as it's ever been but it's also no longer sufficient. And we recognize as an organization that we have to do better because if our kids come with us and hang with us and are safe and are 18 and leave high school but aren't ready to access any kind of college or trade school, then we failed them. Because the only way you can grow up to have a fulfilling career these days, most realistically, is by achieving and earning at least two years of post-secondary training. Could be a four-year college, like Sandy, that would be great. Or it could be a two-year community college or a trade school or the military. There's lots of different paths. But pretty much you need to have something beyond a high school diploma. So we focused as an organization on really doing a better job supporting our students' academic needs, making sure they're doing their homework, providing tutors for them. And the cornerstone of our strategy is to partner with the schools. So we work very closely with the three local school districts, Ravenswood, Redwood City, and Sequoia. And we are aligning our programs to match what the kids are learning during the school day so that it becomes a natural extension and we've evolved from an after-school program to more of an expanded learning time partner. We run programs now on campus at six schools. And the kids stay there and just roll into our program. And if they're learning fractions in the morning, we'll do fraction games in the afternoon. If they're doing state capitals, we'll reinforce state capital lessons in the afternoon. And if you talk to one of the principals, she'll say that her school runs from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. This is simply what a lot of very successful charter and private schools across the country have done. But we're partnering with the public schools to bring it to our youth. And as... And that... As a result, we're able to expand the amount of instructional hours that our members receive by 700 hours a year in terms of after school and summer. That's an increase of 60% of what they receive from the school day alone. And as we've made this evolution, and we've, you know, we've hired more more staff from places like Teach for America or have education backgrounds, there's always been a little bit of concern that maybe we're going to lose some of the fun of being a Boys and Girls Clubs kid. And I assure you we're not. I assure you that we still have all the enrichment activities, the health, the exercise, and the fun activities that they need. And I'd also suggest that, you know, doing well in school, that's kind of fun. That's all right. I don't apologize for that. And I'll ask you this. What's more fun than this? 
Walking across stage getting a diploma. Hey, that's pretty good. So what makes the Boys and Girls Clubs unique? Just some overview for those of you who are new to the organization. We cover the three primary low-income neighborhoods between San Francisco and San Jose. So it's a North Fair Oaks section of Redwood City, Eastern Menlo Park, and of course, right here in East Palo Alto. We have nine locations, three clubhouses, like this beautiful one, um, but we also have the six school locations I mentioned. And the school locations have really allowed us to expand out and to serve more families, reach more, reach more kids. Um, and we have, with that expansion, we're now able to serve 1,800 students, almost 2,000 students who come, on average, 4.1 days a week. We, we serve all grades. I'm not sure of any other organization that serves grades K through 12. And we also run programs school year and summer. Now, that's exhausting on the staff, I won't lie. Um, but it's certainly a way to leverage all of our fixed costs, and it's a way to be very cost-effective. Another thing that makes us most very unique and perhaps most important of all as an organization is our firm commitment to serving all students. We do not select who can be a Boys and Girls Club's member. Everyone's welcome here. Doesn't matter your grades, doesn't matter anything you can possibly mention, you're welcome here to be a member of the Boys and Girls Clubs. That's critical to our mission. The results have been promising. 90% of our members are graduating from high school versus a community average of 60%. And last year, we had 101 high school graduates. So we're very pleased with the direction. There's, there's a lot more to be done. We're emphasizing literacy now. And so we're focusing much more on literacy for the younger grades. We're sharing data with the schools. So we actually know how well our kids are doing, and we're measuring things that matter to the schools as well. So we're not at all satisfied with where we are, but we're coming from a strong platform, aiming to get much, much better 